Greetings hobbyists and welcome to another Blender Basics video. All of these videos are designed for people relatively new to Blender looking to get a grip on exactly what this powerful program can do. And we'll cover all the elements that you need to know to get started including things like navigation, manipulating objects and all those tools that you need to achieve the results you're looking for. We'll do this in a series of short videos so they're all clearly labelled so you can easily search for them. And in each video we'll cover the bare basics while going on to things that are slightly more advanced so that as you continue on your journey through Blender you can improve the way that you use these different elements. And in this video we're having a look at how we can select objects effectively in Blender. So let's get some objects that we can select. So I'm just going to shift and D and bring this over in the Y direction and then shift and R to repeat that. We'll then select all of these. There we go, that's our first demonstration of selecting. And then shift and D, Z and then we'll again shift and R to repeat that action a few times and we've got a load of objects. Right, so selection tools. Now we'll find all of these in the top left hand corner. So I'm actually just going to move that over there so it's out of the way and then we can start taking a look at these. And then let's enlarge those as well so they're easier to see. We're not really talking about anything else. And the standard option in Blender is to be using the box select which you can see we've got here. And it's this icon, so select box. Now we can hold down on this at any time to change between selection modes or we can press W to filter through them and there's a few other shortcuts as well we'll mention them and there's a few other shortcuts as well we'll mention them when we get to them. So the most basic option that most people will use is the box select and that allows us to click on objects or click and drag to select multiple objects. Now importantly you only have to slightly, if we just click this one, slightly touch an object and then release and then it will have selected that object. That is a really important thing for some of these selection tools as they don't always select everything they touch. Sometimes they're based on the origin. Now there are a range of shortcuts we can use as well. I'm going to come to those in a minute but I want to go through all of these first. Then we have the circle select tool. That we just click and then we can drag and anything we then start clicking again and start a new drag then it's only selecting those. And you'll notice again if I click it removes all the other selected options at least as we're using it just with our mouse and that allows us to select things. You'll also notice that I can go all the way over this object and it doesn't select it until I move over where the origin is. So if you don't have the origin of your object quite in the middle, sometimes this can be a bit of an annoyance. You can also come up here and change the radius to make this much larger or smaller depending on what you need for this. Then we have our lasso select and this works in a much more freeform drawing way where we can select the objects that we want. Once again, if we just come through this one and click, it works off where the object origin is. So just by glancing over, let's just take these, we only select the ones where we've gone over the origin. And then finally you have tweak. Tweak allows you to only select one at a time unless you use a shortcut, we'll come to those in a second. So you can't box select, but the difference is once you've selected something, instead of having to press G to be able to move it, you can just click and drag it and that allows you to move this by tweaking it. You can use all of these in edit mode as well, so you can use them to select vertices or edges or faces. Now let's go back to select box and you'll notice that with select box we've got some options at the top and these are very important. They can do a range of different things and they change how our selection functions work. So as standard if we select and then start clicking again and drag that removes the previous selection as we're going. But if we select this icon here, this extends the existing selection. So I can now click and drag and now this is adding to the selection that we have previously. You can see everything I've selected is in green just to make everything really clear. In our next option, we've got subtract. That will shockingly keep everything selected but remove anything we drag over. So if we've selected one extra thing that we don't want, we can get rid of it. Then we have invert existing selection. Now this feels a little bit counterintuitive in many ways but if I drag over these cubes here what's going to happen is it is going to select only the ones that weren't originally selected. So if I let go you can see it selected just these four but it has added those to the previous selection that was at the bottom. So if I drag and do that again you'll notice that the ones that aren't getting involved in this drag, those two cubes at the bottom, when I let go those two remain selected but we've inverted the area that we've dragged over. And then finally we've got intersection, 
This will only select the ones that are already selected and remove anything that's not in my current box select. So in this instance, the two cubes here aren't in my box select. So when I release the mouse, only these two remain. And we can use this to get pretty much any form of selection we want. Now, there are some shortcuts for some of these. So we'll talk through those one at a time. The first one is circle select. If we press C, we get a circle select while remaining on box select. Now this works slightly differently. You'll notice we don't have a radius, but instead we scroll on the mouse wheel to make this bigger or smaller. And this, as we drag and select, if we start selecting again, we'll keep the previous selection. So we don't need to worry about these options up here. Now to get out of this, you actually have to press escape. And in fact, you can't do any function. For example, I can't scroll to zoom in or out and I can't delete anything. If I hit delete, you can see it's doing nothing. You have to escape to get you out of this select mode before that's gonna work. Also, if we're in any other mode, so for example, circle select, I can press B at any point, and that turns that into box select for that next action. Again, B, and then we've now got box select going, and that will work in an additive way as well. Let's come back into box select and click off. Finally, we've got some shortcuts that actually bring in a lot of this functionality anyway. So this is why most of the time, most people will just generally use box select. So if I click and drag here and I want to add these to it, all we do is click and drag and then hold down shift and then we can get the next set. And then we can carry on with that as much as we want. If we decide that we want to remove anything, if we hold down control, that will remove from our selection. So you can see me removing them here and you can freely go between them. You can also hit Control and Shift at any point and that will use the intersect method. So for example, if I drag here, these two cubes that are outside of my box selection, again, won't be selected. It will just keep the selection that was inside my box. So this is pretty much all of your selection tools. Now, some of these are a little bit funky, so I suggest you have a play with them. For example, circle select, if I hold down shift, will work. And if I hold down control, will work. But if I hold down control and shift, then it doesn't like it because it doesn't have a box to work off of. So you've got to be aware that some of these won't always work. You can almost see which ones will work. So extend and subtract in that top corner. If we come to lasso select, all of them will work again. So I can hold down shift and we get more. I can hold down control and then we subtract and I can hold down control and shift. And once again, just those ones that are being intersected will work. Annoyingly, I don't think there is a shortcut for the invert selection. So we're gonna have to come to that there to be able to do that. Maybe I just haven't found it. Do let me know if you know of a shortcut for the invert select. I've been using Blender for quite a while at this point, and I just don't think I've found one, though admittedly I don't use it a lot. And then with tweak, we can also do the same thing, though annoyingly this doesn't show that we can do it, of holding down shift to select multiple and then click and dragging. But annoyingly, holding down control doesn't work to subtract from it. Instead, all we do is hold down shift and click and then click again. So if we've got the one that is not just selected, but active, that's one in blue in my settings. If we click on it again, it will get subtracted. So click, click, click. And then if we want to get rid of this one, click till it's blue, click again, and then it's gone. So a slight difference there with that one. It's kind of almost annoying that it is different and it doesn't just work off of control, but that's the way it is. So hopefully that's gonna give you the tools you need to select the items that you want. I will once again just point out if I go into box select and select these and go into vertex mode, that's using machine tools. I've mentioned that on a previous video on add-ons. This also has exactly the same functionality in edit mode as well. But if you're coming and looking at something flat on and I go to select these, you'll notice that we only select the vertices facing forwards and that's because it's only the vertices we can see. If we wanted to select everything, we'd want to press shift and Z to go into x-ray mode drag to select and that will select everything but once again if i hold down control that will remove and if i hold down shift to control that will do our intersect so this works just as well in edit mode as it does in object mode as always i hope you found that useful if there's any tips or tricks that you find particularly handy on selecting feel free to comment on the comment section and i will add a link to a video that goes through some other really cool selection tricks that are a little bit more detailed in the description for if you feel ready to take Blender a little bit further.
If you did find that useful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel or potentially even subscribing to the Patreon where for a few dollars a month you get these videos ad free and a week early, as well as other great perks as well. Have a great day guys.